So let's take a look at memory and how to utilize those memory skills. Usually we think of memory as a closet and individual memories as old shirts that we hang in that closet. Remembering is just rummaging through that stuff, but see there are problems with this image. Closets can get crowded, things disappear, even with a big closet you eventually run out of space. Research has actually shown that memory is a process. Biologically, a memory involves millions of neurons that fire chemical messages to each other. In real time, regions of cells all over the brain glow with electrical charges at speeds that put the fastest computers to shame. So each time you access that memory, you are chemically recreating it in your brain. Your brain is an uncharted land. Every time you recall or review something, you're creating a pathway. The more times you travel that path, the easier it is to reach your destination. Whenever you learn something new, your brain changes physically by growing more connections between those neurons. The more you learn, the more connections. So for all practical purposes, there is no limit at all to this process. So let's talk about building those paths, how you organize it. Be selective. The art of memory is the art of selecting what to remember in the first place. Make it meaningful. One way to create meaning is to learn to take things from general to the specific. For example, you can organize things by time, by location, by category, by continuum, um, high to low of importance. You can alphabetize. Create associations. When you introduce new data, you remember it more effectively if you associate it with something similar or something related, like a subject you already know or something you really like. When you make these associations, it's easier to recall. And I'm sure you've probably done that before. Learn it once actively. Action is a memory enhancer, not necessarily the literal engagement of physical action, but using the same energy level can increase your retention. Relax. Students who can't recall information under extreme stress, like say for a fine exam, um, can often recite the same facts later when they're actually relaxed. So when you're under that stress, it makes it so much harder to remember. Create pictures. Diagrams, cartoons, abstracts, these can also often be actually seen in your brain and recalled more easily when you can visualize them. Recite and repeat. When you repeat something out loud, you anchor the concept in two different senses. First, the physical sensation of saying it, and then second, hearing it. This is why a lot of people utilize this when they meet someone. They'll, hello, Mr. Johnson. It's nice to meet you, Mr. Johnson. What do you do for a living? And by repeating the name, it makes it more likely for you to remember it. You've said it, and you've heard it. Repetition repetition is important because it strengthens those neural pathways we talked about in your brain making the information easier to retrieve. Um, recitation works best if you say concepts in your own words so don't try to repeat it exactly as it's written say it your own way in your own words and finally write it down. Writing a note to yourselves helps you remember an idea even if you never look at that note, just having to write it down helps significantly. Another way is to engage your emotions. So when a topic excites love, laughter, or fear, the brain specifically, um, the amygdala in your brain, it sends these flurry of chemical messages that say in effect, this information is really important and useful. Don't forget it. You're much more likely to remember course material when you relate it to a goal, whether it's academic or personal or a career that you feel strongly about. This is one reason why it pays to be specific about you want, what you want. So if you want, I want to pass this class. I want to get an A in this class. And when you get passionate about that, that helps with memory. Overlearn. One way to fight that mental fuzziness is to learn more than you need to know about the subject. 
and escape short-term memory traps. A short-term review within minutes or hours of a study session can help um, move material back to that short-term, but you want to move it from short-term to long-term. So those quick many reviews can save you hours of study time when exams roll around. So when, when you finish something, let's say you finish a class and you took notes, take five minutes to go over those notes, just review them. It helps significantly. If you're just trying to cram, cramming is that short term and that traps, um, that short term trap, excuse me, that can create a lack of memory. So it's good to continually review that information. Use your times of peak energy. Don't try to study when you're exhausted. At the end of the day, when you are tired and you've spent all day at work or at school, use your best times when you're at your peak energy, not like midday when you're ready to take a nap. These aren't your best energy times. Distribute learning. As an alternative to marathon study sessions, experiment with shorter, experiment with shorter spaced out sessions. So you might find that you can get more done in two or three hour sessions than in one big long marathon six hour session because you're much more likely to take breaks and to have those memory lapses and to go into memory vacation or brain vacation. Be aware of attitudes. Believe it or not, your attitude can affect your retention of subjects. So if you think a subject is boring, um, then you're less likely to remember it, you're less likely to make it important. So you have to remind yourself that everything is related to everything else. Look for connections that relate to your own interests or relate to your goals. Give your brain a chance. Sometimes the way you combine studying with other activities can affect how well you remember information. Say you just get home from a lecture and you dive into a mystery novel that you've been dying to finish. Oops, you just lost parts of that lecture in your book. So try to stick with it. Give your brain a chance to build the pathway to remember this information. Maybe you're walking between classes. Try to recall what your, your instructor was just talking about on your drive home. Um, recall those lectures that you had, maybe some of the key notes, or if you watched a video, replay those things in your mind. Combine techniques. techniques. All of these memory techniques work better when you combine them. Choose two or three and use them on a, an assignment, on your next assignment and experiment. See how it works for you. And finally, remember something else. When you're stuck and you can't remember something that you're sure you know, remember something else that's related to it and it may help you. I'm sure you've done this when you've gone shopping and you forgot to write down a shopping list and you think, what was that other thing? I came here for five things. It may help to go back and remember those other four. It might jog you to remember what that final or fifth, fifth thing was. It's the same with study. Notice when you do remember. To develop your memory, and you do have to develop it, notice when you recall information easily and ask yourself what memory techniques you're using naturally. And notice when it's difficult to recall information. Maybe it's easy for you to remember information that you see that you physically see. Maybe it's easy for you to remember something that you're attached to an emotion with. Recognizing what helps you remember best will help you discover strategies that you can use to retain information for class. And use it before you lose it. Even information encoded in long-term memory becomes difficult to recall when we don't use it regularly. The pathways to information become faint with disuse. To remember something, Access it a lot. Read it. Write it. Speak it. Listen to it. Apply it. Find some way to make contact with the material regularly. Each time you do so, you widen that neural pathway we talked about to the material and back again and make it easier to recall the next time. And finally, adopt an attitude that you never forget, which should be turn the positives into, excuse me, turn the negatives into positives. Positive self-talk, as silly as it may seem sometimes, can lead to positive outcomes, and studies have shown this time and time again, so turn those negatives into positives.